How's it going everybody? Welcome back to 2A News Now and thank you so very much for taking time for tuning in to my video. A federal judge contends that most firearms can be banned without violating the Second Amendment. U.S. District Judge Janet Bond Adderton tossed out a lawsuit challenging Connecticut's ban on concealed carry in state parks, strangely ruling the plaintiff in the litigation didn't have standing to sue because there was no credible threat of him being arrested or prosecuted for violating the ban. Then why have that law in place to begin with? It makes no sense whatsoever. And I think you'll agree that's an exceedingly odd decision. But it kept the ban in place, at least for now. Which I guess counts for a win as far as anti-gunners are concerned. But it gets better or worse depending on how you look at it. Now Adderton has followed up with another legal doozy. Rejecting a preliminary injunction against the state's newly expanded ban on so-called assault weapons and large capacity magazines by declaring the Supreme Court's Second Amendment jurisprudence allows for bans on commonly owned weapons and that only a ban on firearms that are so pervasively used for self-defense that the ban then would infringe or destroy the right to self-defense would violate our right to keep and bear arms under the judge's bizarre interpretation of Heller, McDonald, and Bruin Everything from bolt-action hunting rifles, from single-barreled shotguns, could be banned without calling into question the right to keep and bear arms, presumably leaving some, but likely not all, handguns protected by the Second Amendment's language. If, according to the judge, only those arms that are pervasively used in self-defense cannot be banned, then firearms most commonly used for lawful purposes such as hunting and sport shooting have no protection whatsoever under the Second Amendment, regardless whether or not the state of Connecticut still allows them to be sold. The judge also rejected the use of FBI crime statistics that point to rifles of any kind, rarely used in a homicide, because the data supposedly provides limited relevant insight, since these statistics do not track what type of firearms are used with enough precision to determine whether they're assault rifles. The judge also took the state expert John Donahue of Stanford University at face value, though Donahue has maintained the individual right to keep and bear arms, for some crazy reason was created by the Supreme Court with Heller and was not a pre-existing right protected by the Second Amendment in 1791. Here's another head-scratching moment and a blatant disregard for the facts when the judge cited a 1994 case known as Staples versus the United States. Plaintiffs contended that the case showed a distinction between military grade M16s and semi-automatic AR-15s, but the judge bizarrely claimed Staples does not mention AR-15s. But if you look at the case, there are eight specific references to AR-15s. In one single page of the Stapleton opinion, when the judge claims the rifle goes unmentioned in the opinion. It's not a significant error on her part. It's a blatant lie. But it's also an example of just how sloppy and outcome driven her ruling is overall. Large capacity magazines are arms according to that judge, as are AR 15s and other firearms banned by Connecticut's prohibition on assault weapons. But that doesn't mean they're protected under the Second Amendment, according to her. Only if large capacity magazines and those prohibited firearms can be shown to be pervasively used for self-defense. Are they afforded protection? A position that calls into question the lawfulness of almost every firearm exempt handguns that flies in the face of the text, history and tradition of our right to keep and bear arms. And it would be downright laughable if it not for the effect of the judge's decision could have on gun owners in the state. In closing, the good news is that the judge has given the plaintiffs plenty to work with on appeal, and the judge's opinion won't be the last word on Connecticut's ban until the Supreme Court steps in and sets things right. However, we're unfortunately going to see more active judges and their unfounded opinions allow for abuse and infringements of our right to keep and bear arms, and relief can't come soon enough for gun owners in blue states intent on eradicating the substance of the Second Amendment protections. It's extremely obvious that this judge is biased. She lied when she said there was no mention of AR-15s in that one case 
And on one page, it mentioned AR-15s eight times. There's no room in the justice system for a judge like this. As always, I would really like to hear your thoughts about the story in the comment section down below. If you guys could just take one quick second and help the channel out, and like, share, and subscribe, and hit those post notifications, it also does help the channel grow. And I invite everybody back to see my next video.